that we will start at 11 itself so yeah. i just unmuted you uh, yeah yeah so we have th three minutes to go then we start the session yeah 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 you have unmuted right Three minutes to start the session. Yes. Meanwhile, you can just, if you want, you can just give us a brief what you intend to speak. Pardon? Brief background what you intend to speak till then. Brief background. Yeah. You may kindly see the topic itself uh, states that the constitution and its dynamics. So how the constitution is functioning essentially now? How the constitution is divided into number of parts and who are the players? Who are the stakeholders? It is impacting on the public. And what sort of protection is giving to the citizens? We may have to, I may be taking you several important, to my mind, articles of the Constitution and the uh, latest amendments uh, in the Constitution, at least uh, three to four amendments, uh, which is welfare oriented and uh, and 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 one important substitution made in the constitution and moreover some suggestions regarding some amendments to be made to the constitution this will be my attempt i hope you are clear yeah before we start how was your experience while, while you argued the matter of navtej case navtej it was quite interesting and uh, i have argued the matter before the division bench justice singhvi and uh, mukobadhyay and that judgment was rendered in favor of the people and uh, party whom i argued that is uh, 377 should be there that was a contention advanced and uh, now the matter sailed before the five judges bench in the form of jaw and uh, that was also an interesting experience the supreme court to my mind was very kind and benevolent to the people who were suffering that's what's happened now i'm told that certain review petitions have been curative petitions have been filed it's a dynamic approach that is uh, that has been adopted by the supreme court to my mind and very compassionate Taking a different perspective, giving the constitution and all a different altogether adjust and way forward to think. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a it's a law is uh, uh, properly cut out in the changing society. That is how I feel. And to accommodate and to bring these people into the mainstream of life and uh, to give them respect and dignity which which to my mind is uh, taken care of or rather one of the preamble or concept in the constitution dignity of every individual and so, what was your take after that sabri mala's case before we to go to the session we just wanted let's have the insight of your all what, what went behind all these judgments what was your experience what was your journey that was a brilliant case i mean spiritually viewed and uh, what is uh, institutional morality and what is the discussion of the lord almighty and uh, whether people who do not believe can bring in a public interest litigation rather to decimate one of the aspect of the faith of the religious community 
another religious community, if I may say so. So it was argued in a very cordial manner, in a pleasant atmosphere. All the views were taken. But unfortunately, the five judges then held that uh, the women can be allowed to entry. That is the prohibited age group, 10 to 50, can be allowed to have darshan. Which, to my mind, goes against the religious freedom guaranteed under Article 25 and 26 of the Constitution of India. And unfortunately, there was a mixing up of Article 17 judgment. Article 17 stands on a total equality. I mean, 14 to 18 cannot be allowed to uh, detrimentally affect Article 25 and 26 of the Constitution. So now the matter is pending before the nine judges bench. After Justice Bugoy pronounced his judgment. Now, in view of this particular ability is having the space to accommodate all the nine judges. How the lawyers can be, because it, it, usually it used to be a crowded court in the Chief Justice Court when these matters are being argued. So that is the situation. Anyway, one is looking for... Mr. A. Radhakrishnan doesn't require any further introduction. He has been one of the brilliant lawyers who has been associated with all matters which are of constitution importance. All lawyers and the students would be enriched by your knowledge for the fact that Invariably, large number of lawyers, even though they are practicing on the uh, constitutional side, primarily they are believe that constitution is primarily based on Article 14, 16, 19, yeah. somewhat not is 51, 300. Mm. But after your knowledge, uh, once you speak, we will have a matter which will have more things to have a food for thought in the mind and the heart. So over to you, uh, as per our plat uh, platform, yes, fifty yes. minute around forty to fifty minutes. We will ask for your thoughts. Then there will be Q A in a session for around thirty minutes. So the session will be up till one thirty or uh, twelve thirty. So over to you. Right, it is. I can start. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning to all, and I wish everybody that by the grace of the Lord Almighty, all of you are having very good health, both physical and mental. Now today, we have to have a talk, constitution and its dynamics. Kindly see, the Constitution of India has been framed and we have, the, we the people of India have resolved to constitute this republic in a particular form that is sovereign, socialist, secular and democratic republic. This is for the purpose of an orderly living of the people, healthy, wealthy, and peaceful, and orderly living of the people. Now, how far we are successful in the situation? Kindly see, our constitution is divided into 22 parts with the 395 articles and with the 12 schedules. Now there are 28 states and nine union territories coupled with 135 rules of all of this 
our stakeholders or the participants in the dynamics of the Indian constitution. Now, the nature of the constitution, you can appreciate that governance contemplated in the Indian constitution is a federal form of government tilt towards center. And uh, Dr. Ambedkar has Ambedkar statements or observations have been. Say, this is wrong. Sorry, wrong. I think. Can I continue? I hope. Sir, so. just for your convenience, whatever topic, whatever articles you will refer, our team will try to post it on the sh uh, screen share. So that yeah, I, will, if they, I will I will give the citation of the judgment. No, citation also you can give. Our team will also post it on the uh, right. chat box. You can. No, I am referring. I am referring to Kuldeep Nair versus Union of India, 2006, 7 HCC, page one. That is a citation. The audibility is okay. Exactly. Slightly internet issues from your side, it seems. Hello. Just ask Jigdish to check the internet issues at your end. Hello. Can I proceed? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, your network bandwidth is slightly low. It's fine. It's fine. Sir. It's fine. So you are working through the mobile or the normal broadband because bandwidth is quite low. Hello. So you can continue. You can continue. There is some. Hello. Hello, is it audible? Uh, uh, it's a, a network bandwidth issue. It will uh, get, improve with time. Hello. So all these states, 28 states, 22 states, uh, I mean, 28 states and nine union territories have been held together to form a federal republic that is the indian republic and how it is acting now what is the dynamics now etymologically the word dynamic means active and study of Are one may have to explore for that purpose you may kindly see the preamble or concepts contained in the constitution that is we are proposed to we are supposed to secure to all the citizens and Article 14, 15, 16. Yeah. The topic upon which the talk is to be held is on the dynamics of uh, the constitution and its dynamics. Etymologically, you may kindly see the word dynamic means active, and the dynamics means study of forces involved in the movement. Our constitution is a federal constitution. And the governance constitute uh, governance contemplated is also federal, with a tilt towards the center. And uh, that tilt towards center, contemporaneously, is 
highly advantageous because of the onslaught of the coronavirus all over the world especially when uh, and and our honorable prime minister has taken adequate steps to ward off the danger and to quell the danger in so far as our nation is concerned so this federal constitution means it is all the states and the union they have been held together unlike in the united states they are it is not coming together in so far as india is concerned they are held together and they are being governed this is the form of a federal character which we are having in our constitutional scheme of which reference have been made to dr ambedkar's speech in the judgment of the honorable supreme court in kuldeep nayar versus union of india which was reported in 2006 7 cc page 1 you can refer to paragraph 50 and 51 of the third judgment on page 49 now in the process how the constitution is functioning or the to deal with the dynamics of the constitution one may have to see certain articles and the interplay of certain articles these articles especially are articles 14 to 18 which is commonly called the equality code and article 19 which deals with the freedom of speech and other freedoms and article 21 which deals with the right to life and personal liberty and then the freedom of religion in article 25 and 26 in fact in article 25 to 28 the freedom of religion is dealt with in our constitution coupled with the directive principles of state policy and as contained in article 51a the fundamental duties of the citizens now can we see the period during which this nation is passing the entire people are attacked by the virus but the constitutional scheme affords protection to the citizenry this is what is exactly happening all the institutions under the constitutions are functioning in a well oiled manner and the federal structure or the federal scheme is brilliantly working you can see how the prime minister is conducting the video conferencing with all the chief ministers of the states and union territories and devising methods and designing ways and means to alleviate the sufferings of the people all over india during this tough time so there is a form of emergency here what is that emergency we may have to admit that there is a social emergency or rather to be more precise a health emergency and the government are acting under the national disaster management act as well as the epidemic act now in this context i may raise a point for your consideration that you can you can you can see part uh, 18 of the constitution which deals with the emergency provisions and you can see article 360 of the constitution in part 7 part 18 which deals with the uh, 
First 356, provisions in the case of failure of constitutional measure in the state, that is 356 and 360 deals with the provision as to financial emergency. Of course, there is a financial, financially difficult situation is emerging all over the world and in India as well. But what's the sort of emergency which we are specifically undergoing? It is health emergency or a sort of social emergency. So I may suggest an amendment to the constitution in part 18, that is, which deals with the emergency provisions that health or social emergency, an article may have to be inserted to deal with the health and social emergency situations of the like which we are undergoing now. Coupled with that, I may also suggest an amendment to the constitution in the directive principles of state policy, which you can see in part four of the constitution and in article 39A of part four, you can see the caption is equal justice and the free legal aid. What about free medical aid now? In a healthy health emergency situation, how about extending free medical aid to poor citizens, or especially those who are below the poverty mark, BPL, to be more specific? So such an amendment can be thought of in Article 30 in the directive principle in part four as well. That means an amendment in part 18 to deal with the emergency provisions and amendment in part four of the constitutions to extend free medical aid in situations of this nature may have to be undertaken by the parliament of India immediately after the tough period is over. This is my view to, uh, to accomplish or the proper functioning of the constitution uh, in tough times. Now I'm saying that it is functioning extremely well and even without these provisions, I mean, uh, that is provision to make a free legal aid, it is not provided in directive principles of state policy, but nevertheless, the government of India are extending all sorts of help to the poor, to the citizens of India. And the government of India also resorting to two statutory enactments have taken care of the emergent situation that is in existence now and by providing cash transfer, direct cash, cash transfer, increase of food supply through PDS. Because what is our aim now? Aim is right to life, not right to liberty. Kindly come to Article 21. It is right to life and personal liberty. We have restrained ourselves in view of the locking down provision, personal liberty to a great extent we have given up. We are not going out. We are locked up. We have no grievance with respect to that. Our purpose, our aim is survival that is right to life. We are asserting and we are fighting for that purpose. This is with respect to Article 21. Now kindly see Article 25 of the Constitution, which deals with the religious freedom in provided in Article 25. Now, if you see Article 25 of the Constitution, right to freedom of religion with a caption, freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion. And the article commences with the subject to public order, morality, and health. 
I went through the constituent assembly debates as to why to understand, to research as to why the word health is provided there. Now kindly see why the word health is provided here. We are now understanding why the constitution makers have inserted that word health in Article 25 of the Constitution, subject to public order, morality and health, or, and other provisions of this part, every, all persons are equally entitled to freedom of conscience and right freely to profess, practice and propagate religion. This is the right conferred. So the caveats are, it is subject to public order, morality, health, and other provisions of the constitution are entitled to the freedom of conscience. What is freedom of conscience? See, earlier it is stated morality. Morality are of two kinds, public morality and private morality. And private morality has something to do with the freedom of conscience. You can be you can have your own ideas about your religion. You can have your own means of worship. And the conscience indicate probity, then I may tell you the meaning of those words. The three important words are the I'll come back to that later. And now I'm, I have to concentrate on the word health. Why health is provided? I was trying to elaborate that. Now, subject to health, it is the, the right to propagate the religion is subjected to health. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just try. Yes, um, unmuted. Uh, yes. Yes. Continue, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption. And uh, we were on Article 25 of the Constitution, which deals with the freedom of conscience, free profession, practice, and propagation of the religion. Now, in respect of this, what is meant by conscience, I was trying to elaborate. Conscience contain. Conscience means it is a private morality. And it has got three aspects, that is, prudence, probity, and beneficence. What is meant by prudence, one may ask. It is a duty to ourselves. Prudence means duty to ourselves. And probity, it is abstaining from doing something which is harmful to others. And what is meant by beneficence, the third aspect doing to make doing something to make others happy now these three words which comes under the word conscience used in article 25 of the constitution are of utmost importance insofar as our nation present disposition is concerned we have got duty to ourselves which we are performing and we have to abstain from doing something which is harmful to others, which we are doing with a high degree of responsibility. And the third one, the beneficence, doing, to make, doing something to make others happy. And to, uh, to, uh, we, are, we are also doing our level best in that case also in that respect also this is my view of the situ situation a uh, general question posted in the group is kindly repeat the three components which you have uh, said repeat three uh, three components the three components are prudence probity and beneficence prudence probity and beneficence Prudence means duty to ourselves and the probity means abstaining from doing something which is harmful to others and the beneficence means doing some of these 
which is which will confer some good upon others these are the three aspects thank you and uh, this is the import of the word conscience and this comes under the private morality because each one of us are having the conscience and we have got freedom of conscience also so these words are cardinal and we are now called upon by the virus which is attacking us to be prudent to be to behave with the probity and uh, to confer and to act in accordance with the beneficence concept of beneficence this is my view of the situation the assessment of the situation and the constitution under article 25 is functioning and uh, and when tested the citizenry the 135 crores of indian they are responding to what is contemplated or they are acting in accordance with the freedom conferred upon them is my humble assessment but i may have to deal with that word health contained in article 25 of the constitution and the word propagate to what extent you can propagate your religion we have got all of us are having religion and this is subject to propagation is subject to what you may call public order health and morality there is i have already told you that is private morality is there public morality is there what is a yardstick or the principles upon which the public conduct themselves that is the public morality and uh, then comes the health aspect how the health is important to what extent the health is important is now evident and for what purpose this uh, word is provided is also evident now and because of the religious congregation that was held in nishanuddin and uh, the 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 spread of virus um, in view of that so to what extent you can propagate your religion first you have to propagate your religion well the, when the health conditions are okay and you cannot you have to propagate religion without harming public order without causing any detriment to the public uh, peace so subject to health subject to public peace and order and subject to morality also that means all the three uh, concepts which i elucidated earlier so these things may have to be borne in mind and one may have to interpret the word propagate also the propagation or the propagator has to do his work within the region he cannot go he cannot it cannot be an extra religious propagation he cannot do it outside his region this is my view with respect to article 25 and one may have to one can even think of bringing an amendment to article 25 of the constitution or through a pro interpretative process the word propagation can be how far what is a what is the field of action of the word propagation may have to be properly settled of course that may get settled in the matters now it is pending before the honorable supreme court this is my view now we can go ahead and proceed to the directive principles of state policy in part four of the constitution can you see article 38 of the constitution which state is to secure social order and promotion of welfare of the people and 39a equal justice and free legal aid 39a i have already made my submissions or i have already made my viewpoints very clear regarding that which warrants a constitutional amendment for 
free medical aid in a emergent health situation to poor people especially and then article 40 deals with the the organization of village panchayats in this context i may have to draw your attention to two parts of the constitution which deals with municipalities certain certain institutions those institutions are municipalities panchayats and uh, cooperative institutions and those parts are kindly bear with me part number nine the panchayats article 243 to 243 o and part number 9a the municipalities article 243 p to 243 is a g and uh, part number 9b article 243 is a x to 243 is a t now how these institutions are functioning now in the present day all these institutions have pulled up their socks and and are working for the betterment to alleviate the miseries of the people, to, to diminish the trials and tribulations now faced by the people, the citizens of India. These are all constitutional institutions. When tested, they are rising up to the mark and they are coming up to the mark. And one have to salute all these people. When we salute our doctors who are taking care of the health, of the people who are uh, and the nurses and and uh, the the health workers health warriors if i may say so now kindly see moving ahead you are coming to i may have to take you uh, i take you the provision relating to Article 370 of the Constitution, that is regarding Jammu and Kashmir. To my mind, a golden substitution has been effected. Que Article 370 by the Parliament recently. Now, and I have to read that provision. In exercise of the powers conferred by clause 3 of Article 370, read with clause 1 of the Article 370 of the Constitution of India, the President, on the recommendations of Parliament, is pleased to declare that as from the 6th of August 2019, all clauses of the said Article 370 shall cease to be operative except as stated above. This is through a notification and a prayer to the substitution article 370 read as under that is temporary provisions with respect to the state of Jammu and Kashmir that temporary provision that has been deleted that is substituted by the new article 370 and uh, Jammu and Kashmir has been brought to the mainstream of India through a presidential uh, notification that notification which I just now read to you and presently, Article 370 reads, all provisions of this constitution as amended from time to time without any modifications or exceptions shall apply to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. This is how it is being brought into the mainstream, national mainstream. This is a, to my mind, is a golden substitution uh, effected by the President of India on the, on the advice of the Council of Ministers and by resorting to sub article 3 of article 370 which uh, else 12 existed now another dynamics 
or another activity is certain amendments which have been which has take uh, which have been brought in with respect to the constitution you may kindly see the constitution 99th amendment act 2014 incidentally i may have to tell you we have in cricket parlance we have hit a century and it is not out still where the amendment number of amendments brought to the constitution it is more than 100 now now i may to be i may have to deal this recent recent amendment constitution 99th amendment act 2014 which is amendment of article 124 of the constitution and insertion of article new article 124a 124b and 124c what was contemplated was a positing a national judicial appointments commission so that is it wanted virtually to displace the present collegium system in our constitution i mean in the appointment of judges to the supreme court as well as to the high court but that has been struck down by the uh, supreme court and uh, what is still pending to be settled is with respect to the memorandum of procedure that matter is still pending to my mind another amendment which may have to be taken note of by all of you and to be appreciated is a constitution 100 and the first amendment that is insertion of article 246a in the constitution that is 246a is a special provision with respect to goods and service tax kindly see goods and service tax is a tax levied across goods and services on an all india basis including jammu and kashmir in this in the process around uh, eight taxes levied by the central government like uh, excise service tax have been subsumed and and nine taxes levied by state governments like uh, vat and an entertainment tax that also have been subsumed into this uh, gst goods and service tax and uh, it is a marked departure from the erstwhile indirect tax regime which was prevailing in india and to accomplish the same kindly see four enactments have been enacted what are they they are wherever the central government is collecting the tax or levying the tax for that purpose to facilitate the same central goods and service tax act has been enacted that is a cgst and in so far as the state governments and are concerned that is wherever the state governments are levying the tax sgst act has been enacted that is the state goods and service tax act has been enacted and wherever the union territories are levying the tax union territory goods and service tax act has been enacted that is utgst now another enactment in line is the igst that is a integrated goods and service tax this is to, in connection with the interstate supplies of goods and services so this in fact is uniting the nation this is a marked departure from the erstwhile taxation regime 
and uh, uh, this is an important dynamic act insofar as Indian constitution is concerned one may need you may kindly see I am standing only at the doorstep of the Indian constitution now because within one hour I can only have a broad view of the Indian constitution and its dynamics and I am just uh, lifting certain articles and certain amendments to bring to your kind notice what is the dynamics that is happening now where the Indian constitution how active is the Indian constitution how active are the institutions or the constitutional institutions under the Indian constitution and these enactment or this amendment is all the act of uh, uh, have been passed by the parliament for the betterment of Indian society. Now kindly see the next amendment which has been taken up by the Indian parliament. That is a constitution 102nd amendment act 2018 which inserts a new article that is article 338b. What is article 338b? What does it contemplate? It contemplates the position of National Commission for Backward Classes and the article reads there shall be a commission for the socially and educationally backward classes to be known as National Commission for Backward Classes. You may kindly see these are all activities to accomplish the preambular concepts contained in the constitution and to uplift the downtrodden and the backward classes all over India and we have to wait or we waited this number of years more than 60 or 65 years to bring all these amendments and to make in and and and, and put in position a national commission for backward classes a brilliant move by the indian parliament and the government in power now kindly the second uh, next amendment the constitution 103rd amendment act 2019 it amends through the process by inserting sub article 6 in two articles of the Indian Constitution. That is Article 15, a sub Article 6 is provided, inserted, and Article 16, another sub Article 6 is inserted. What is, in fact, Article 15 and 16? Article 15 deals with the prohibition of discrimination on grounds of region, race, caste, or place of birth. And 16, equality of opportunity in matters of public employment. And what are these articles? What are the new insertions? You may kindly see the new insertions are sub article 6 in article 15. Nothing in this article or sub uh, set close G of article 1 of article 19 or close to of article 29 shall prevent the state from making any special provision for the advancement of any economically weaker sections of citizens other than the classes mentioned in clauses 4 and 5. So this is also an enabling provision to alleviate the distress of the people that is economically weaker sections of the people. That's also a brilliant move taken or resorted to. A late tax but nevertheless, something has been done off late. Now, can you see the sub article 6 of article 16? That is, nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any provision for the reservation of appointments or force in any economically weaker sections of citizens other than the classes mentioned in clause 4, in addition to the existing reservation 
and subject to the, a maximum of 10% of the force in each category. So this is also expected to confer benefits upon <coughs> the stakeholders in Articles 16 of the Constitution of India, who are the equality of opportunity in matters of public employment. This is how the Constitution of late, I'm just bringing to your notice, the activities or the actions taken under the Constitution, focusing mainly upon the economically downtrodden people, the backward classes, and all sorts of backward classes uh, in India, and to alleviate, alleviate their miseries. So these are our activities, or these are our actions under the Constitution by the constitutional institutions. Now, how, insofar as we are concerned, we the citizens are concerned how we have to act, how we have to discharge our obligations under the Constitution. In the difficult time which we are undergoing, we should have the civic sense. If we are not having that, it is high time that we are cultivating the same. And personal hygiene as well. And to cover all these things, we should be led by the word patriotism. Then only we can do justice to our constitution. We have been conferred with the rights and freedom. Of course, the state is duty bound to protect our rights and freedoms. But we also have duties. Can you see the fundamental duties upon S part uh, 51A? What does it state? Part 4A. Article 51, a fundamental duties. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to abide by the constitution and respect its ideals and institutions and the national flag and the national anthem. To be precise, that we should be patriotic. These are our fundamental duty to abide by the constitution and respect its ideals and institutions. Now comes under close D, defend the country and render national service when called upon to do so. Kindly see the national service now being rendered by the medical community, by the medical professionals, doctors, in the, in the situation in which we are in now. And uh, thereby, we have to do justice to ourselves, we have to do justice to the constitutional concepts and the constitutional principles. And whenever there any friction arises in the matter of confirmment of right or freedom, you may have to resort to the concept of balancing. Concept of balancing is a constitutional necessity. You cannot interpret any of the provisions of the Constitution to annihilate another right given by the Constitution. That is, one fundamental right cannot be resorted to decimate another fundamental right or mutilate the other fundamental right. To be precise, I may bring to a kind notice the equality code that is contained in Article 14 to 18 of the Constitution cannot be applied or interpreted in such a manner 
that it has got more authority on the right to freedom of religion uh, conferred under Article 25 and 26 of the Constitution of India. And uh, we are our Constitution, or our rather, rather our nation, is known for its unity in diversity. And now we are united in diversity as well as in adversity. This is our situation. Thank you. Uh, so some people have put questions on the chat box. Yeah. I am reading it. Amdesh asks, freedom of religion should be to the extent that it should not affect the health of the citizens. Please elaborate the interlinking of religion and health. What is your call? Religion and health are interlinked. And the religious freedom has been specifically subjected to health. Now, kindly see in India, all the temples are closed, mosques are closed, churches have been closed, only the essential religious ceremonies are being performed. No pilgrims are going to the temples or to the churches or the mosques or Gurudwaras, for that matter. Why? You may ask. Because of the pandemic. What does the pandemic do? It affects the health of every everyone. It can invade into every, every person. If one is not careful, if one is not vigilant, if one does not have immunity to resist the invasion. And especially the people above the age of 60 and the children, they may not be having, they are vulnerable. So one has to be careful. And any religious propagation or any religious activity in such situations uh, cannot take place. And the people should be disciplined. That is why I emphasized on the civic sense and the responsibility of the people to how they are conducting themselves. Even the religious freedom, there are caveats in that, subject to public order. You cannot disturb the public order. You cannot disturb the public peace. You have to act in accordance with the morals known to this nation. There are certain moral principles, dharmas, known to this nation, which are basic and essential so far as India is concerned. How India is called in Article 1 of the Constitution, you may kindly see what is the name of India. Kindly see India. Article 1. India, that is Bharat, shall be a union of states. That Bharat denotes the dharmas that prevailed in India. That is why that word is provided there. It has got its own culture. It has got it, it, its own discipline. So it has got its own sense of morals, moral principles. So that may have to be adhered to. That's my humble view. So you, you cannot, you have to act, you have to restrain yourself. And the right to freedom of religion can be controlled by the difficult period uh, when your health is in difficult position when you are confronted with the health emergencies which we are undergoing now and uh, i may have to tell you that the nisamadin conference also congregation also should not have taken place because of the rule of distance which has been imposed very many measures have been adopted by the central government but uh, such measures have to be adhered to and accepted and obeyed by the people for the betterment of the people. It cannot be flouted. So this is my view on that. Ritesh Khatri poses, if a doctor refuses to serve despite the applicability of ESMA, but government cannot do anything because his acts are not an in ingredient of strike. So does it mean 
that the right of light of persons of state are being violated despite ESMA? Uh, can you please repeat that? If doctor does, if doctor is not. It is uh, essential services maintenance act has yeah. been imposed. Yeah. And doctor refuses to perform his duty just because of the fear of pandemic and being a virus that his health could be at peril. Can any action be taken against such a person? May kindly see. Everybody has to act in accordance with the conscience and the oath which he has taken. What is the oath that the lawyer is taking when he is getting enrolled as a lawyer? And what is the oath that is being taken by the doctor? So he has to act in accordance with the oath we, he has taken. So if he is so he is duty bound to act in accordance with the oath which he has taken at the time of enrolling himself as a physician or a medical professional. Otherwise, he is committing some offense to my mind. He can be booked. In order to deal with the pandemic, such as COVID-19, in a better way, do you think health emergency should be codified like financial emergency, etc.? Absolutely. That is why I, I advocated and I suggested that an amendment should be there that is why I brought you a notice, part uh, eight, 17 of the part 18 of the Constitution, which deals with the emergency provisions, part 18, proclamation of emergency 352, and uh, effect of emergency, effect of proclamation of emergency 353, 356, uh, that is provisions in case of failure of constitutional measure in the states. And uh, now you are sliding to the financial emergency, that is Article 360, provisions as to financial emergency. But health and social emergency are not there, and we have to make an amendment in respect of that. And I am very hopeful that such an amending provision will be inserted after 360 of the Constitution. And uh, simultaneously, in the directive principles also, with respect to Article 39A. Uh, that is equal justice and free legal aid, free medical aid also in the times of health emergency. That's my answer. Uh, if any amendment made under Article 13, sub clause 4, which is placed in the ninth schedule, then how court under which doctrine could declare it unconstitutional? Which one? Under Article 13.4, if any amendment is placed under Article 13.4, which is placed in the ninth article, shall apply to any amendment of this constitution made under Article 368. Not article 13.4, you mentioned that reads nothing in this article shall apply to any amendment of this constitution made under Article 368. Now, uh, for that purpose, 13.2 may have to be seen. State shall not make any law which takes away or abridges the rights conferred by this part, and any law made in con uh, contravention of this clause shall, to the extent of contravention, be void. But four is there as a caveat, and in that context, surely the question has come. Can you please repeat? Really? Can you please repeat that question? No, that question stands at the thing. The next question is, the way the economy is moving, where does a financial emergency situation is likely to become? Hello? Financial emergency, we are, it is up to the, the call is to be taken by the central government as to a situation uh, as to whether the a situation which warrants for the declaration of a financial emergency under Article and the under the relevant provisions of the Constitution, the call is to be taken by the central government by assessing all the situations, emerging situations. We are in a difficult position. And the world, there is a sense of, uh, there is a process of deglobalization, if I may say so, that is happening now. 
Now, kindly see the financial situation in our country. But the RBI is extending all help. The central government is doing the best action possible through the packages and by the money transfer and uh, increase, in, but that is the direct cash transfer and uh, increase of food article uh, uh, through the public distribution system, etc. But the call will have to be taken, as I said earlier, by the central government. Let us pray that such a situation may not arise because the central government is also contemplating of easing down the locking down situation. And in that context, only the Honorable Prime Minister is conferring with all the Chief Minister concerned on next Monday, to my mind, on 27th of April, if I am correct, subject correction. So, after May, uh, uh, because what is to be eased is there must be production of the, there must be uh, agricultural activities. Why? Agricultural activities is for the purpose of production. Then after the production and the conservation of the materials, then comes the next step, the distribution. Distribution through the process of transportation. This activity will have to take place because as I stated earlier, it is all a question under Article 21, that is right to life. And what is the fight? Fight for survival now. We have to assert our right to life. We have to live. We are not now concerned with the next limb in the artic Article 21, that is personal liberty. While Americans are now concerned with the personal liberty, they want to be free. Can you see the statements coming from the President of the United States, Trump? He is trying to free down uh, and uh, 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 he is to make or uh, declare that the life is or life is normalized in the United States. That is what he is contemplating about. Because why? They are more concerned about their freedom rather than their existence itself. Can you see the death rates in the United States? But nevertheless, they are concerned about the second lip of Article 21, not about the first lip. This is my view. What is your take on the constitutionality of the state intervention on the management of temples? Can you elaborate your suggestions on social emergencies and also elucidate on extra religious uh, propagation? Now, I would like to see the, the two, those two limbs. You may kindly uh, repeat. First question I will repeat. Uh, there are three questions he has posed. I will read one question at a time. Yeah. What is your take on the constitutionality of a state intervention on the management of temples? On the management of temple, the state cannot. State cannot intervene. State has to be neutral. Because the state is secular. Why the Indian citizens, they are not secular. They are entitled to have their religion. They, they have got the fundamental right to have their conscience. And religious freedom is also there. State has to be neutral. State cannot take power. And the state, in fact, I'm sorry to say, has taken over only the Hindu temples not Muslims, uh, most nor Christian churches. That's the situation. So can you, that's my take. Can you elaborate on your suggestions on social emergency? Social emergency, you may kindly see very many factors comes under social emergency, including health emergency. Social emergency, you may kindly see if, uh, if, some, in, if some, something happens, uncontrollable situation emerges like riots or anything of that sort, uh, which disturbs public peace and the public are put to all sorts of hardship, then of course a social emergency is uh, necessitated. Kindly elaborate on extra-religious propagation. Extra-religious propagation. Extra-religious propagation can bring disturbance in society it will unsettle the peace of the society and moreover it is something unconstitutional also you are intruding into the faith of another person because every person is having the right of conscience
You may kindly see Article 25 for that purpose. 25, how it is worded? 25 is subject to public order. All persons are equally entitled to freedom of other uh, freedom of conscience and right to freely to profess, practice, and propagate religion. So, the freedom conferred under Article 25 are equal to all persons. Nobody is having a superior freedom or nobody is having a superior right. Everybody is having an equal right. Suppose you are propagating extra, extra religious propagation. You are intruding into the faith of another person, which can result in conversion, which is prohibited by the constitution and there are judgments to that effect available. This is my take. Under what provision of the constitution, the amendment in the medical emergency could be incorporated? You can incorporate under 369 to my mind. Medical emergency. Uh, you can go to article, the emergency provision 360. After 360, you can in part, part, part uh, 18 of the constitution. Part 18. After article 360. Could religion based news be censored since the freedom of expression is being misused nowadays? Pardon, pardon, pardon. pardon. Could, could religion based news be censored since freedom of expression is being overused these days? Censoring provided it deserves the public peace, it public order, and it will have deleterious effects upon the, the uh, public at large and if it is motivated and if it is with a nefarious uh, attempt then it may have to but as a last resort always because freedom of expression is something fundamental can union of government bring any can white which the wealth gold etc lying in the temples and religious institutions be utilized for the betterment of the nation especially in the current times no that cannot be because the wealth of the temple is for the administrators of the temple and for the welfare of uh, the <coughs> what do you may call the religious denomination contemplated under Article 26 of the Constitution. It can be utilized only for the purpose of the religious denomination. It cannot go outside that. It cannot be acquired. Then the state will be entering, in, intruding into Article 25 and 26. I have already noted that the state has to be neutral in this with respect to these aspects. Considering the present situation, shouldn't the state be bound to protect the citizens and provide free medical health of without course. the economics, etc.? No, uh, no the, the state is justified in making a classification there. State can make a classification, you may kindly see Equal justice and free legal aid, Article 39A, Directive Principles of State Policy, and the free medical aid also. I advocated for that purpose, and I even suggested an amendment to the Constitution that free medical aid for the people who are who require it. You have to identify. So the financial capacity of the individual may have to be seen as to whether he satisfy the criterion or the yardstick designed and devised by the state or the authorities concerned that is entitlement if you are entitled you are you have to be provided with if you are not entitled you cannot impact of section 144 vis-a-vis -vis the rights of citizen where impact of section 144 vis-a-vis -vis the rights of citizens 144 which section? Which oh, CRBC. Yes. CRBC. 
Let me see here. Just a minute. Just a minute. And now, go to the next question. 144. I will answer. Hello. I'm coming. That I'm. If what are your views on the All India Judicial Services like UPSC? Would it be beneficial for the nation or not? All India Judicial Services. Yeah. It it can be beneficial. It can be beneficial. Young blood can be inducted, and it will function well. One forty four. You are on 144 or 144 A? 144. Urgent cases of nuisance and apprehended danger. Power to issue order in urgent cases of nuisance and apprehended danger. That's a power conferred upon the district magistrate. Sufficient ground for proceeding. Immediate prevention of speedy and remedy. Desirable. The magistrate may direct an order. So it is only to curb the nuisance and uh, apprehended danger. That is, the situation has to be assessed by the respective authority concerned. And uh, that assessment, it is a discretion of the authority, and there cannot be any indiscretion. And the discretion has to be rational and reasonable. The authority cannot act upon the ipsy dixit of that authority. You have to make an assessment of the whole situation. And apprehended danger means it is a it's a it's a wild word, you know. Apprehended danger, you cannot you cannot dream. Oh, this is, this is going to come. So I have to issue appropriate orders. I have to invoke Article. I mean, Section One Forty Four. You cannot do that. So the proper assessment, evaluation, and uh, admission of inputs from all sources concerned, proper inquiry. These are the watchwords. Before uh, resorting to uh, section 144, it cannot be invoked uh, on a regulation basis. You cannot. Uh, what is your take on the mob lynching? Pardon? What is your take on mob lynching? Mob lynching has to be deprecated, condemned. Recently uh, in Palgar, it has happened. Very sorry to say that. It should not be resorted to. Every human life is valid. You have to respect the life of other person, the liberty, right to life. What are you doing? What is your authority to indulge in such activity? This is where the civic sense is lacking. You are not disciplined. The awareness must be there. You should have that spiritual background also. Then you will not be venturing into these fields. Sumit Jain asks, should not free medical aid be put in fundamental rights instead of directive principles? As the yeah, it can, it, can, it, can, it can be as a subarticle of Article 21. It can be as a subarticle of Article 21. That you are uh, you are entitled, depending upon if you are satisfying certain parameters, you are entitled. It can be. In the present scenario, when there is lockdown, whether the state can direct uh, the schools to waive off the school fees. Pardon, pardon. Will you please repeat? In the present scenario of the mm -hmm. lockdown, whether the state can direct all schools to waive off the school fees. Uh, state can have a conference with the school authorities and uh, evaluate the impact of a complete waiver or a partial waiver. And uh, depending upon the evaluation, orders can be issued. And uh, moreover, it is better that the approach and the decision is made in a consensual manner. That is, the school authorities also uh, made to understand the plight of the parents who are expected to re uh, remit the fee. So this is a proper, after uh, doing the proper interaction, this can be sorted out, is my view. Because the school, school authorities are also 
I am told in some states, CBSC schools, uh, I have read in some newspapers as well as in the television broadcasts that uh, they are not insisting for new dress for the children because every year they used to insist for new dress. So the, they are not insisting for that. And the enhancement of fee will not be there. All those things they have come out, publicly they have stated. But with respect to complete cancellation, you have to take their views also to what extent they can accommodate that because they may also expend, uh, they may also incur some expenditure in the uh, activity of conducting the school. That is why. Also, it is up to the administration to have a level headed approach with respect to that. Can there be reservation in the defense forces on the basis of caste? On the basis of caste, there cannot be. Ruled, ruled out. Police, doctors, or any professionals say that our COVID-19 warriors are doing their best, but still some miscreants are trying to make situation worse. What action can be taken against the miscreants? That is why uh, the new ordinance have come into place. Kindly, the central government has acted with utmost promptitude in bringing out the new ordinance yesterday or day before yesterday. They have brought out the ordinance to protect the lives of the health workers against uh, from the activities of the miscreants, the disorderly behavior of the miscreants. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since we are running sh uh, short of time, we are touching at twelve thirty. As we had requested you, just five minutes. How to assimilate knowledge, just like you? How to research law? What is your take to the young and st young lawyers, students? And other lawyers young lawyers students kindly she my first advice is they have to take care of their health one by taking food on time usually young lawyers I have been seeing a lot of uh, this uh, young students in Supreme Court interns also with respect to i used to ask them have you taken your food have you taken your lunch no i have not taken more often than not the answer will be negative then i used to advise them please take your food on time otherwise over a period of time you will be suffering so first advice is to take food on time the next advice will be they have to be they have to learn to be patient and they should have the perseverance patient for what purpose for to acquire knowledge you have to be patient to acquire income also in legal profession you have to be patient to acquire uh, work in legal profession you have to be patient so this is the second aspect of the matter the third one is you have to be you have to read at least one judgment of the supreme court of the of, or of the honorable high court every day before going to bed why because thereby you can acquire the legal jargon the legal language you can cultivate that <laughs> legal language is very important for every student of law so in that process and while studying or while analyzing the judgments or while studying a case you have to first see that you are a master on facts facts and dates you should be thorough there cannot be any doubt with respect to that then you then you have to research on law in the matter of research on law, please see the provisions first. Take the act concern or the constitution, if it is text of the constitution, then read the particular article under which chapter that article comes, under which part that article comes, what is the import purpose, the purpose of that article, then how it can be applied here or how the section can be applied here on the facts of the case which you are having 
then only you can you need go to the judgments and with respect to the judgments which you are expected to read you have to make a special note you have to keep a diary with you and all the provisions all the judgments the gist of the judgment the uh, uh, the act or the uh, particular constitutional article under which the judgment has been pronounced all those things have to be noted and if you are keeping those this will become a very good reservoir for you to which will uh, which will come to your help after around 10 years or 15 years later that's a advice which i have to give then learn to do yoga and uh, some meditation also to be peaceful and uh, please don't find fault with others uh, when you are disturbed because you are responsible for your disturbance not others these are my advice to youngsters uh, so we are coming to an end <coughs> it was a wonderful session uh, after hearing you the different facets of constitution has been explored in different dimension we always had a perspective in a different way but the session which we have attended today has given us a thought process in a different way we never knew there are so much facets which could ordinarily be done it is just like we have gone through every page of constitution in a manner which could be understood despite the fact that we are in profession for so many years we knew yeah. large number of aspects which were never there though we had a short time for one hour no just one word before yeah. towards her interjecting you with permission i may tell no, you no you you are the master of the show no no yeah you may kindly see please ask yourself if any one of you have taken the text of the constitution in your hand and sat for three or four days and started reading from preamble to the last article 395 and uh, all the schedules has any one of you undertaken that process if you have not please undertake that because this is an advice given to me by my professor joseph minato a triple llt holder in my university days please so just like <laughs> i'm cutting you short at the outset i stated majority of the people though say that they are a constitutional lawyer but they invariably deal on article 14 16 19 21 300 and by the end of the day they say they are a constitutional expert uh, so as we are coming to an end i will ask puneet sekho to give a vo formal vote of thanks puneet uh, hi, hi, uh, Mr. Chatur. Thank you so much, Mr. Radhakrishnan. It's been an honor and a privilege uh, to be listening to you and uh, your in-depth knowledge of the Constitution as well its provisions. Is uh, we are all very inspired, and we will definitely take this into account. Um, read since we have the time now to read the Constitution. That the way you showed us to read it, the different provisions, the interplay of the various provisions with one another in the times of uh, COVID at this point of time and your uh, wonderful advice that you've given to all young lawyers. We are the middle-aged lawyers. I would put myself in that category and I'm so inspired by what you've just said and uh, we will take that to heart as well. Thank you so much and we would hope that you would come again to this forum and um, we'll probably take up another facet of the law. And uh, we would be, of course, very, very anxious and uh, uh, willing participants wanting to listen to you. Thank you very much. Wish you well. Wish you all very well. Very grateful. Before Thank we you. part, I'm just telling the other members that today in the evening we are again having a one interesting uh, facet of law by the senior advocate, Mr. Siddharth Luthra, former additional solicitor general, yeah. do's and don'ts of the criminal trial. I would ask everybody to join. Those who have not joined the WhatsApp group, they can join the WhatsApp group. They can like the Instagram page or the Facebook page. They will have the update knowledge. Thank you, everyone. It was a wonderful Thank session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.